Hello, and welcome again to the Hurricane Utah Adult Religion Class, sponsored by the Hurricane Utah North Stake of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. My name is Mike Parker, and I'm the instructor for the class. The Hurricane Utah Adult Religion Class meets on Thursday evenings between September and May to discuss the scriptures of the restored Church of Jesus Christ. If you live in or are visiting the Hurricane St. George area, I would love to have you join us. Links to the class website are available in the show notes for this video. On the website, you can download my notes, which includes footnotes documenting my sources, this PowerPoint slide presentation, and handouts that I distribute in class. Please note that this YouTube channel and the class website are not official sites of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Hurricane Utah North Stake, or any other church unit or department. I alone am responsible for these sites and the materials on them. If you enjoy this lesson, please click the like button and share it with a friend. And subscribe if you want to be notified when new content is posted to this channel. This week's lesson will incorporate four clips from Journey of Faith, an excellent video that was produced in 2005 by the Foundation for Ancient Research and Mormon Studies at Brigham Young University. Journey of Faith includes interviews with dozens of Latter-day Saint and non-Latter-day Saint scholars about Lehi's journey through the Arabian Peninsula. The research that's been done in this area over the last 30 years has provided both insights into the narrative of First Nephi and powerful evidence of the historical authenticity of the Book of Mormon. Journey of Faith may be purchased on DVD online through Deseret Book and Amazon.com. The entire video is also available online on YouTube. While I have written permission to use the video during my weekly class, I do not have permission to use its copyrighted material in this video. When we come to segments in the lesson that use clips from Journey of Faith, I will direct you to links in the show notes that you can click to watch and then return to this video. Alternatively, you can watch the entire Journey of Faith video first and then view this lesson. To introduce this lesson, let's go over the key individuals. First is Lehi, a prophet called to preach in Jerusalem in 597 BC. The Lord commanded him and his family to flee into the wilderness. Laman is Lehi's eldest son. Lemuel is Lehi's second son. Nephi is Lehi's fourth son and the author of the text that we are studying. Ishmael is a prominent inhabitant of Jerusalem. He and his family went with Lehi's family into the wilderness. And then we also have the sons and daughters of Ishmael. None of them are named in the text, but they either supported or opposed Nephi at various times in the narrative. The outline of events for this lesson begins with Lehi's party traveling through the wilderness of Arabia, often suffering from hunger and experiencing the deaths of loved ones. They arrived at a fertile place by the sea they called Bountiful, where they built a ship. They crossed the sea to the promised land. Nephi quoted prophecies written on the brass plates, but that he might more fully persuade his brothers to believe in the Lord their Redeemer, he quoted specifically from the prophecies of Isaiah. The setting for this lesson is the wilderness of Arabia. First Nephi chapter 16 opens with Lehi's party encamped in the Valley of Lemuel alongside the Red Sea in the Arabian wilderness south of Jerusalem. They departed and traveled south along the coast and then east across the Arabian Peninsula to a fertile coastal area that they called Bountiful. They spent eight years in the wilderness. Nephi didn't reveal how long it took for them to build the ship and cross the sea to the Promised Land. I think a reasonable estimate would be that it took two to three years to build the ship and another one to two years to make the voyage across the sea. Lehi's group departed from the Valley of Lemuel first. Nephi, Laman, Lemuel, Sam, and Zoram each married from the daughters of Ishmael. Having fulfilled all the commandments of the Lord which had been given unto him, the Lord instructed Lehi to leave the valley of Lemuel and depart into the wilderness. 
On the morning of their planned departure, Lehi found outside his tent door a round ball of curious workmanship made of fine brass. The word curious is probably meant in the same way it's used in the Old Testament in the King James Bible, meaning wrought with care and art, elegant. Inside the ball were two spindles, one of which pointed the way we should go into the wilderness. These pointers, which were in the ball, did work according to the faith and diligence and heed which we did give unto them. The ball also had writing on its surface, which was plain to be read, which did give us understanding concerning the ways of the Lord, and it was written and changed from time to time according to the faith and diligence which we gave unto it. Over 500 years later, Alma explained to his son Helaman that his ancestors called the ball Liahona, which is being interpreted a compass. The term compass almost certainly doesn't refer to a magnetic compass. Rather, it may mean a crafty contrivance or work of art. There's no evidence that Book of Mormon prophets used the Liahona after the time of Lehi and Nephi, but it was passed down from generation to generation with the plates of Nephi, the brass plates and the sword of Laban. It was one of the sacred objects seen by the three witnesses of the Book of Mormon. For Nephi, the ball was symbolic of how, by small means, the Lord can bring about great things. Alma used the Liahona as a symbolic type. Quote, For just as surely as this director did bring our fathers, by following its course, to the promised land, shall the words of Christ, if we follow their course, carry us beyond this veil of sorrow into a far better land of promise. Unquote. That's Alma 38, verse 45. Following the Lord's commandment and the directions on the ball, Lehi's group gathered their provisions, broke camp, and departed south-southeast into the wilderness of the Arabian Peninsula. At this point in the lesson, I'd like you to watch the Journey of Faith DVD, chapters 14 through 16. You can click the link to video segment number one in the show notes. This is a five minute, 45 second clip running from timestamp 27 minutes, 11 seconds to 32 minutes, 58 seconds. Go ahead and pause this video, then return to it when you've watched video clip number one. Lehi's party traveled in nearly a south-southeast direction, following the directions of the ball, which led them in the more fertile parts of the wilderness, near the shore of the Red Sea. After traveling for the space of many days, the group stopped to rest and replenish their food stocks. It was here that Nephi broke his metal bow. His brother's bows had lost their springs, so he fashioned a new wooden bow and an arrow and asked his father to seek a revelation from the Lord on where to hunt for game. Lehi received direction through the Liahona, and Nephi was successful in gathering food for the group. At this point in the lesson, I'd like you to watch the Journey of Faith DVD chapters 17 through 23. You can click the link to video segment number two in the show notes below. This is a 24 minute, 35 second clip running from timestamp 32 minutes, 58 seconds to 57 minutes, 33 seconds. Go ahead and pause this video, then return to it when you've watched video clip number two. After traveling many more days, they arrived at a place called Nahum, where they tarried for the space of a time. Ishmael died and was buried at Nahum. Ishmael's daughters mourned his death bitterly, lamented their condition, and wanted to return to Jerusalem. They then murmured against Lehi and Nephi. Laman and Lemuel took advantage of this discontent and plotted to kill their father and brother, claiming that they had deceived them and that Nephi sought for power over the group. But the voice of the Lord came and did speak many words unto them, and did chasten them exceedingly. 
Laman and Lemuel repented, and the Lord blessed the group with food. The party left Nahum and headed into the wilderness, turning eastward into what today is called the empty quarter of the Arabian Peninsula. The women in the group bore children along the way. Two of these children were Jacob and Joseph, sons of Sariah and Lehi. Without food to kindle fires, the group was forced to live on raw meat. Despite these hardships, Nephi wrote that they began to bear their journeyings without murmurings, and the Lord provided for them. Nephi explained, And thus we see that the commandments of God must be fulfilled. And if it so be that the children of men keep the commandments of God, he doth nourish them and strengthen them, and provide means whereby they can accomplish the thing which he has commanded them. That's 1 Nephi 17.3. Their journey at this point had lasted for eight years. At this point in the lesson, I'd like you to watch the Journey of Faith DVD chapters 24 to 32. You can click the link to video segment number three in the show notes. This is an 18 minute, 11 second clip running from timestamp 57 minutes, 33 seconds to one hour, 15 minutes, 44 seconds. Go ahead and pause this video, then return to it when you've watched video clip number three. After their arduous trek through the Arabian desert, the group arrived at a lush coastal region that they called Bountiful because of its much fruit and also wild honey. After Nephi had been in the land of Bountiful for the space of many days, the Lord commanded him to build a ship and showed him where to find ore to make tools. Laman and Lemuel mocked Nephi, calling him a fool and refusing to help him build the ship. For they did not believe that I could build a ship, neither would they believe that I was instructed of the Lord. Nephi's brothers accused him of being foolish like their father in bringing them into the wilderness, when they could have remained in Jerusalem, and we might have enjoyed our possessions and the land of our inheritance, yea, and we might have been happy. Nephi lectured his brothers by recounting the history of Israel's rebellions in the Sinai wilderness, down to the time of their destruction by the Babylonians. He accused Laman and Lemuel of being murderers in your hearts, like the Jews who wanted to kill their father, and of being swift to do iniquity, but slow to remember the Lord your God. He told them that they were past feeling, that ye could not feel the Lord's words. Laman and Lemuel were furious and wanted to kill Nephi by throwing him into the sea. Nephi warned them that whoso shall lay his hands upon me shall wither even as a dried reed. So powerful was the Spirit of God that Laman and Lemuel dared not touch him. Nephi shook his brothers by the power of the Lord, and they fell down and began to worship him. Nephi commanded them to worship the Lord and obey the Lord's commandments. After Nephi and his family finished the construction of their vessel, the Lord commanded Lehi to arise and go down into the ship. The next day, they loaded the ship with provisions and launched into the sea. Nephi wrote that they were driven forth before the wind toward the promised land. His description of being driven forth before the wind indicates that they sailed with the wind at their backs rather than tacking into the wind. If that was the case, then the prevailing winds in the Arabian Sea would have taken their ship eastward. From there, they would have sailed around the Indian subcontinent and toward Southeast Asia, Oceania, and the Pacific Ocean. At this point in the lesson, I'd like you to watch Journey of Faith DVD chapters 33 to 35. You can click the link to video segment number four in the show notes. This is a seven minute, 55 second clip running from timestamp one hour, 15 minutes, 44 seconds 
to 1 hour 23 minutes 39 seconds. Go ahead and pause this video, then return to it when you've watched video clip number four. This is the last clip from Journey of Faith in this lesson. After many days of travel on the sea, some of the passengers became irreverent and rude. When Nephi attempted to correct them, they tied him up. The Liahona stopped working, and a massive storm arose. The storm raged for four days and was so fierce that everyone on board believed they would drown. It was only the fear of death that caused Laman and Lemuel to release Nephi, after which the Liahona began to work again, and the storm subsided. Under the Lord's direction, Nephi guided the ship to the Promised Land. After many days, they arrived and set up their tents. The seeds they brought from the Old World grew readily. In the forests, they found animals they could domesticate, as well as wild animals. Gold, silver, and copper were abundant. Nephi used the writings on the brass plates to explain the ministry of the Messiah. He prophesied that the Messiah would come according to the words of the angel in 600 years from the time my father left Jerusalem. He quoted messianic prophecies of Zenoch, Nahum, and Zenos from the brass plates. These prophets testified that the Messiah would be crucified and buried, after which there would be three days of darkness. Nephi quoted extensively from the writings of Zenos about the destructions that would follow the Messiah's death and the scattering and gathering of Israel. Nephi declared that he wrote these things unto my people, that perhaps I might persuade them that they would remember the Lord, their Redeemer. He then wrote in 1 Nephi chapter 19, verses 23 to 24, quote, And I did read many things unto my people, which were written in the books of Moses, but that I might more fully persuade them to believe in the Lord, their Redeemer, I did read unto them that which was written by the prophet Isaiah. For I did liken all scriptures unto us, that it might be for our profit and learning. Wherefore I spake unto them, saying, Hear ye the words of the prophet, ye who are a remnant of the house of Israel, a branch who have been broken off. Hear ye the words of the prophet, which were written unto all the house of Israel, and liken them unto yourselves, that ye may have hope as well as your brethren from whom ye have been broken off. For after this manner has the prophet written. The key to understanding how and why Nephi used the writings of Isaiah is found in his comment, I did liken all scriptures unto us, and his commandment to his people to also liken them unto yourselves. Nephi took the prophecies of Isaiah and interpreted them as if Isaiah were speaking about Lehi's descendants. In other words, Nephi adapted Isaiah's writings as prophecies about the people of the Book of Mormon. This is a different interpretation than Isaiah's original context and meaning for his prophecies. It can be a little confusing if we always read Isaiah the way that Nephi did. We're going to conclude this lesson by briefly discussing how Nephi adapted Isaiah chapters 48 and 49. We'll return to Nephi's use of Isaiah in lesson 8 when we discuss 2 Nephi chapters 11 through 29. Nephi quoted Isaiah chapters 48 and 49. This is the first time Nephi quoted Isaiah at length. In its original context, Isaiah 48 and 49 was the Lord's message to the people of Judah who were in exile in Babylon. The Lord appealed to his obstinate people and lamented that they had not hearkened to his commandments. The Lord's servant, his Holy One, will not only gather the people of Israel, but will also be a light and salvation to the Gentiles. The Lord will fulfill his promises by gathering the people of Israel to their lands with the assistance of Gentile nations. When Nephi had finished reading aloud the words of the prophets, Laman and Lemuel told him they did not understand what these things meant. I think we can empathize. 
Nephi gave them his interpretation of the writings of Isaiah and Zenos, with special application for other lost tribes of Israel, including Lehi's descendants, who were scattered across the world and upon the isles of the sea. Nephi declared that the house of Israel, sooner or later, will be scattered upon all the face of the earth, and also among all nations. Because they have hardened their hearts against the Holy One of Israel, they shall be scattered among all nations, and shall be hated of all men. He prophesied that the Lord would raise up a mighty nation among the Gentiles upon the face of this land, and by them shall our seed be scattered. What was the mighty nation among the Gentiles prophesied by Nephi? We discussed this in our last lesson in connection with Nephi's prophecy in 1 Nephi chapter 13, verses 13 through 19. Many Latter-day Saints have interpreted the mighty nation of Nephi's prophecy to be the United States of America. Consider, however, the chronological requirements of his prophecy in 1 Nephi chapter 22. Reading from verses 7 and 8, the time cometh that, one, after all the house of Israel have been scattered and confounded, that, two, the Lord God will raise up a mighty nation among the Gentiles, yea, even upon the face of this land, and three, by them shall our seed be scattered, and four, after our seed is scattered, the Lord God will proceed to do a marvelous work among the Gentiles, which shall be of great worth unto our seed. The marvelous work, number four, is the restoration of the gospel at the hands of Joseph Smith Jr., which was preceded by the first vision in the spring of 1820 and commenced with Joseph receiving and translating the plates of Mormon, September 1827 through June of 1829, publishing the Book of Mormon, March of 1830, and organizing the Church of Christ, April of 1830. According to Nephi, this marvelous work would take place after the mighty nation among the Gentiles had arisen upon the face of this land and scattered Lehi's descendants. The United States was not, by any measurable standard, a mighty nation until at least after its victory over Spain in the 1898 Spanish-American War. And it wasn't the world's leading military, economic, and technological power until conclusion of World War II in 1945. Considering the chronology of Nephi's prophecy, it's unlikely that the United States was the mighty nation that existed before the start of the Lord's marvelous work. Likewise, the United States had not scattered Native American tribes to any great extent before the gospel was restored. Prior to 1830, white Americans largely purchased lands by treaty or under duress from native peoples. The mass deportation of 60,000 native Americans from their homelands in the east to Indian territory west of the Mississippi River began after President Andrew Jackson signed the Indian Removal Act on the 30th of May, 1830, nearly two months after the Church of Christ was organized as part of the fulfillment of the Lord's marvelous work. Nephi's prophecy requires that the scattering of Lehi's seed take place before the Lord God will proceed to do his marvelous work. Therefore, the United States cannot be the mighty nation of the prophecy. One nation that does meet the requirements of Nephi's prophecy is Spain. The Spanish Empire's domination of the Americas began with the arrival of Christopher Columbus in the West Indies in 1492 and continued for over 300 years until the Spanish-American Wars of Independence of 1808 to 1833. In 1790, Spanish territory in the Americas included what is now Southern Alaska, British Columbia, virtually all of the United States west of the Mississippi River, all of Mexico and Central America, Cuba, and most other islands of the Caribbean, and all of South America except Brazil, Guyana, Suriname, and French Guyana. At that time, Spain ruled an area of over 7.7 .7 million square miles, nearly half the land area of the Western Hemisphere. Spain had risen from being a handful of tiny, divided kingdoms to become one of the largest 
and most powerful empires in modern history. Truly a mighty nation upon the face of this land. The Spanish conquest of the Americas was marked by rampant atrocities that have been described as the first large-scale act of genocide in the modern era. Up to 8 million indigenous people died, primarily through the spread of Afro-European diseases. Of those who survived, many were forcibly shipped or scattered from Central America and the Caribbean to Ecuador, Peru, Chile, and the Philippines as slaves and forced labor. Based on historical events and the chronology of Nephi's prophecy, it seems to me that he foretold the mighty nation of the Spanish Empire that scattered and killed the native peoples of the Americas between the 15th and 18th centuries. That does not mean the United States was not part of Nephi's prophecy. It simply means that his prophecy was much more expansive than just the United States. Returning to Nephi's prophecy, the marvelous work would also be of worth unto the Gentiles in revealing the Father's covenants unto Gentiles and Israelites. The people of Israel would be brought out of captivity and gathered to the lands of their inheritance, and they shall know that the Lord is their Savior and their Redeemer, the Mighty One of Israel. After this, all that fight against Zion shall be destroyed, including the great and abominable church. The same fire that destroys the wicked will save the righteous when the Holy One of Israel comes to execute judgment and righteousness and to reign in dominion and might and power and great glory. Nephi concluded his first book by exhorting his brothers to be righteous and faithful. 1 Nephi 22 verses 30 and 31, quote, Wherefore, my brethren, I would that ye should consider that the things which have been written upon the plates of brass are true, and they testify that a man must be obedient to the commandments of God. Wherefore, ye need not suppose that I and my Father are the only ones that have testified, and also taught them. Therefore, if ye shall be obedient to the commandments, and endure to the end, ye shall be saved at the last day. And thus it is. Amen. Unquote. That's it for this lesson. If you enjoyed it, please click the thumbs up button to give it a like and leave a comment below. Please subscribe if you'd like to be notified when new lessons are posted to this channel and visit www.huarc.org to download the notes and slideshow for this lesson. Next week is fall break here in Southern Utah, so we'll be taking next Thursday off. When we come back in two weeks, we'll review and discuss Lehi's final blessings and exhortations to his family. The reading for the next lesson is 2 Nephi, chapters 1 through 5. Thanks again.